Hi, welcome back to Tech ARK IT YouTube channel. My name is Ravi. In this video session, we are going to see the Kubernetes architecture, which is a container orchestration tool. Um, how the Kubernetes architecture is, how it actually basically defines the resources and how the ar uh, resources are organized in the cluster. Um, what are the components involved and all this information we're going to see on this. So the Kubernetes architecture has multiple components in it. So the first one is a control plane. Control plane are the controller node or master node. So they call it as multiple things, but it's a control plane, which is called as a master node or the controller node, um, which is the one server uh, installed with the control plane component so others are nodes nodes called as a worker nodes worker nodes means they actually have the workload running on them so the control plane or the master node does not have any workload but the nodes the worker nodes actually handles the work so means they deploy with an a port so those are the ports which is in a small smallest component in the kubernetes cluster which is deployed on the worker nodes and they are running some kind of an a application some kind of an a database or whatever the service or whatever it is on the ports so what control plane are the master node or the controller node contains here so basically these are the cluster resources which combination of the master node and worker nodes they are connected using your network or the similar network having the ports enabled and communication between the master node and the worker nodes there might be a geographically different locations or the they might be on a single geographical locations or the single data center um, they are talking to each other having the communication and that but what the control plane actually contains here so the first one is the api server so this is an api component which is the central management entity that exposes the kubernetes api and is responsible for processing the api requests so whatever you want to communicate with the kubernetes cluster so the api is the front end for everything so you have to use cli or it might be in api calls it might be in a user interface but you have to send an api request the api request will be validated with the api server and updating the corresponding objects in a etcd component so that's the centralized management entity for the um, uh, control plane one service is called as an api server the next one is a controller manager controller manager is enforces the desired state of the cluster by regulating the controllers are for the nodes endpoints and the replication so example the kubernetes basically works on the desired state methodology like example whatever the desired state you deployed on the kubernetes it's always maintains that example i need a nginx servers of 10 replicas then it always ensured that those 10 instances are running on that cluster so that is the controller manager um, basically enforces that information or enforces that uh, on the control plane and the etcd so etcd is in a distributed key value store that serves as an a cluster persistent storage so it is basically stores all the key value information on the cluster so the next one is the scheduler scheduler is basically a um, um, a controller scheduler basically uh, example you created a one port so it 
actually monitors the underlining worker nodes and have that information that okay this worker node does not have a load so when there is a new pod request comes or the new pod is created then the new pod will be assigned to that node based on its utilization and based on it how the node is responding behavior there are many matrix it actually take into the consideration and the scheduler will actually uh, assign that pod to the particular node based on the um, the requirement matches are the uh, loading load response and there are many matrix which actually take into the consideration and the schedulers will actually assign the ports to the worker nodes so on the resource availability matrix these are the um, component uh, on the control plane so the controller node has the controller processes are running on that controller node this is called as an api server controller manager etcd and scheduler the next thing is that uh, kubernetes actually connects using the virtual network virtual network means like what are the ports has installed on the nodes and the controllers and everything so those are actually have their own virtual network component so example we have seen in the last video that while installing the kubernetes cluster we have installed the wave network component in it so the wave network component actually when you are deploying or the invoking the cube adm so we have defined this EIDR range like example 10.140.0.0.16 then which has a component like which has a CIDR range from that so it will create its own virtual network and whenever the pod is deployed the pod is created uh, the service is exposed so it automatically assigns the IP address from that pool of CIDR range. So that's the virtual network and that is that virtual network makes this cluster as a single cluster. So multiple nodes into a single cluster. So they work together to make the ports available to the production or the services to be available to the users. So that's the more appropriate way to say a the virtual network. So then next component examples the control plane example so the main thing here is that the control plane or the master node is handling major work like uh, how to uh, example whenever the user is uh, sending an api request it is responding to that and uh, whenever the configuration changes it is writing that configuration change over there and whenever there is a pod request comes in the scheduler takes and assign to the nodes and all this information if you are dependent on this controller node a much because in the production layer if the controller node goes down then you cannot access anything on the kubernetes cluster so that's why what we do is that in a production environments we make a clone are the multiple nodes of the master node so that they have enabled their information replicated and they have uh, have the multiple nodes in place so that if one controller node goes down and the master node goes down you have another controller node so that you can able to communicate with your kubernetes cluster and still you can able to create the pods and access the services and resources and the objects from the kubernetes cluster so that's all about the kubernetes architecture it's very simple that you have a controller node and worker nodes and the controller node has a multiple um, services and the worker node has basically left the majority of the work like running the services servers ports containers and all this information on the worker nodes the heavy lifting is done from the worker nodes and the process mainly kicked in from the master node so those are all the components which involves in uh, doing that work um, are doing that process on the kubernetes cluster so that's all about the kubernetes architecture thanks for watching stay tuned please subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos and courses please follow us on social networking site uh, one is uh, facebook the facebook page name is uh, at linux arkit uh, you can click on this button here and click like page so that you can follow us on facebook 
the next one is instagram uh, instagram name page name is arkit.co.in click on follow button to follow me and uh, twitter if you have any questions on uh, subject line or if you have anything you can just tweet me at a ravikumar48 so i will reply you most on the tweet back for anything related if you want to latest articles on my website so here is my website details and email address details you can reach me over here 